Hello, everyone. We're going to take a look now at how to divide up a document among several translators for simultaneous translation. This is something that's typically done on large documents where the deadlines are very short. Today's demonstration is going to be done with a smaller document simply for the sake of getting an easier overview of what's going on. But the same principle will apply in any case. This is going to be done using a special function in the PM interface for the MemoQ server called Slice. So let's go to MemoQ now and have a look. Okay, here I've imported a document into a Portuguese English project. Uh, it's right here, and I'm going to move the cursor over it, right click, and select Slice. Okay, so how do we want to divide it up? As you can see, this document has 26 segments. And I would like to divide this up among four different translators. So to start off, I'm going to tell it to divide the document into four equal parts. Okay, so segments one through seven, eight through 14, 15 through 20, and 21 through 26. Now I can make changes to any of the settings here. So for example, I can select this one, segments eight through 14, and using the shrink grow function, I can increase the range that will be allocated to that slice, or I can reduce it. So let's go ahead and tell it to start with segment 11, okay? And you'll notice that the preceding range is automatically extended. Okay, I'll do that again. I'm going to change that now to extend to segment number 13. Okay, and you'll see that the end of the preceding range is now 12. Okay, then we click OK to confirm this. And the new ranges are now shown down below. And similarly, if I decide that, no, no, this last part is going to be one slice. I can select both of those ranges and combine them using the merge function down at the bottom here. Okay, and now that is a larger range. If I change my mind, I can then split this range or any other range. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to split this particular slice into equal parts, and I'm going to divide that into three equal parts. Okay, and so now I actually have five slices that are available. In practical work in a project, I typically adjust the size of the slices so that they begin and end uh, with sections in the document or other logical points at which a translator would start or stop work on some thematically coherent section. It usually does not make sense from my perspective just to use an automated split into equal parts without considering where those parts begin and end. Some people do that, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense from the standpoint of achieving a coherent translation, and it tends to irritate translators. So do have a look at the document beforehand and get an idea of where you would like to begin and end the segment ranges for the splits that you're going to configure. And an important thing to remember is that these splits need to be done before the work begins. And if you find that you need to change them later, that can be a real pain in the neck. You have to remove the divisions and then redo all of the work again. So. I find in a practical sense, it's usually better to have more splits and then just reassign the sections if that's necessary. If some translator is not able to handle the workload assigned or if rescheduling is necessary or, or whatever. Okay, now we've got five splits to work with and I'll just click okay. And you can see them here in the translations list and I can individually assign them then to appropriate translators. 
I'll give this one to Felipe and I'll also give him the last section. Okay, Sophia gets this slice. I'll assign this one to myself. And then Gonzalo gets this. Okay, and I will configure the reviewers later. And deadlines, we'll go ahead and edit these. Okay, everyone's got a couple of days to do their segments, and that's it. I'll update the project. And now when I launch the project, everybody should get a notification that it is now available to work on. So I will go ahead and do that. Okay, now I'm going to go into MemoQ and over to the dashboard view for my computer. And from here, I'm going to check out my part of the project. I see a lot of projects here because I have administrative privileges on this server. Ah, here we are. Check this project out. Okay, and here is my slice right here. And you'll notice that I have a T as my role because although I am an administrator on this server, I'm a translator assigned in this project. The other participants all have PM privileges. And so I am seeing the higher role that they enjoy on this server. When they're looking in their own views, they're going to see themselves as translators. In most projects, with translators or reviewers who do not have higher privileges like project manager or administrator privileges, these other slices will not be visible in their checked out copies. So let's have a look at my slice. And you can see here that everything looks the same because since I have administrator privileges, I can just blow past all of the barriers. That's not good. So I'm gonna go make a different thing for myself here. Okay, now I've reassigned the split to myself in a different role using a login that does not have administrative privileges. So let's have a look at the difference. I'll go to check out from server and I will put in my new credentials. Okay, now I don't see all of the projects on the server because this login has only translator privileges no administrative privileges, no PM privileges. I'll check the project out. Okay, now you'll see that I only see the slice that's assigned to me. And that is again, because this particular login does not have any PM or administrative privileges. And this actually enables me to work a lot more securely and not mess up other people. So for those of you who have PM or administrative privileges, it would make sense to create a second account with more limited privileges that you use when you have a reviewer or a translator role assigned. And you want to make sure that you stay within the guardrails that have been created for that particular project for your role. 
So let's go ahead now and have a look at the slice that's been assigned to me. Okay, I'm doing the part from segment 15 down through segment 18. And you may notice that there is a slight difference in the appearance between the section that I'm to work on and the other sections. The sections that I do not have privileges to translate or edit have a gray background assigned to them. So here, for example, segment 14, 13, 12, and so on, are all gray with a background, and the part that I'm to be working on has a white background by default. Okay, and here I can edit those segments, whereas here, for example, I'm tapping away at my keyboard and nothing happens. I can see work that's being done here if the document has been synchronized with the server, but I cannot make any changes to it. And in fact, that's indicated by the lock icon. And I'm not able to change that. Whereas down in the section that I have privileges to work on, there are no such restrictions. If I see a problem in some section where I have no translation or editing privileges, I can leave a comment That's one way of giving feedback to somebody else on the project that they may need to look at something, but I cannot implement any changes in those target cells myself. I can only leave comments. Now, when I've finished the translation here, I would return to the project home, select the slice that I have now completed, and if it's complete, I would then click the Deliver Return button on the Documents ribbon. If I do that right now, of course, I get this message telling me that the document is not complete, so I can't turn it in. But if I had completed it, then it would be returned to the server and notifications would be given to the project manager and any reviewers that were to follow up on my work.